And so I didn't want to be vulnerable. I didn't want to be authentic and I didn't want to be genuine because maybe I had some things in my life that I didn't really want to talk about or my relationship with my wife and kids wasn't really as good as it probably could have been. And uh, I just didn't really want to go in there and be vulnerable and transparent and authentic. And I kind of sat in the corner for about three months around the table, you know, and I was just listening. And then Dave started opening up saying, hey, Sharon, and I've dealt with this. And I'm like, golly, or, man, I couldn't believe you shared that. And then Dan Miller said, yeah, I don't know what to do about this new product. And Ken Abraham said, yeah, I've got this client. I don't know how to handle him. And this other guy said, yeah, I've got a problem with my son. It's kind of gone wayward. And I'm like, these are real people. These are real problems. And like, like they got problems too. And so I started sharing and it was a safe place because I was subjecting myself to scrutiny of non-biased trusted advisors. And they started giving me ideas and I would come in there, you know, I'm an idea guy. I'll get out of the shower and I'll have three new business opportunities. Every time I get out of the shower, I need a whiteboard in my shower. So yeah. I can write these things. And Dave Ramsey would go, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard you say in my entire life. There's no way that's going to work. And I would be like, okay. But then Dan Miller would say, wait a minute, what did you say? And I would say it again. He'd say, you may, you may be onto something. Let's kind of break that down. And then we would start breaking it down. And then other guys would chime in, but we would do the same for each other. And then all of a sudden, you've got these guys around you. They don't have anything to gain or lose as a result of what they tell you. So they're going to give you the truth. And so I started thinking, man, this is unbelievable. It's like having a board of directors. Everything that I'm experiencing with Robin or the girls or my grandkids or my business, I've got trusted advisors that I can bounce things off of. And I started thinking about this pandemic that we're in right now. What if I was alone? Like I got these big business decisions to make and like I could say something and it sounds good to me because I've got this life experience and these filters, but maybe that's not the best approach. So I go out there and I share what I'm going to do. And they'll go, no, man, don't do that. Here's why. Or yes, you do need to do that sooner than later. And so it makes me feel not isolated. It makes me feel like I've got people in my corner. And that's the value that that mastermind gave me for 12 years. We met in person in Dave's office for an hour and a half every Wednesday at 730 in the morning. And I built these lifelong relationships. See, the thing that masterminds give you is perspective. So you can go in with an idea, but you can only think about it one way. No matter how hard you would like to see it differently, it's impossible. So the masterminds give you relationships. It gives you access. It gives you perspective. It gives you the ability to see your blind spots. You know, there's just so many things. It gives us this huge amount of insight that you didn't have before. It gives you affirmation. We all need affirmation, right? It gives you accountability because if you say you're going to do it and you go in there and everybody goes, okay, big A, did you do it? Well, I don't want to go, no, loser. I don't want to do that. I want to say, yes, I did it. And when they push you to do it, then you're successful. Man, listen, there's no way I would be even remotely close to successful personally or professionally had I not been in these masterminds for years because I have so many people and so many resources to pull from.